Hello, 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 everyone. Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome to Daughters Talk here on Elevation TV Network. We are excited about tonight's conversation, real conversation. We have, as you see, her beautiful face. We have Pastor Deborah Allen that is going to be with us on tonight. So thank you so much for tuning in on tonight. We are here every Friday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we just want to say hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us. We would like to give a special welcome to our first time visitors. If this is your first time watching Daughters Talk broadcast, welcome to Daughters Talk. Thank you so much for choosing this broadcast on tonight. You could have watched any other live broadcast, but we thank you for choosing this one. So thank you and welcome. Listen, we are not going to we're not going to hold back. We're not going to be all night. I just want to go ahead and introduce the beautiful, listen, I'm going to get into all her titles. Listen, pastor, prophetess. Listen, y'all, we're going to just do a little bio on her. And if she wants to share other things, then we want her to share other things with us. But hello and welcome. Listen, listen, let's do a short bio on Pastor Deborah Allen, and I'm going to put it up just so y'all can see. She is a born again believer and she is on fire, y'all. Wife, mother, pastor, author, coach, entrepreneur, speaker, founder, listen, you name it, listen. So she wants to expound on that of who she is. And now she's not only just an author, but listen, she's a best selling author. How about that? Thank you, Jesus, for the glory of God. Amen. <laughs> So I would like to just welcome our special guest. Thank you so much for joining us on today. Okay, prophetess Deborah Allen. Amen. <laughs> Blessings. Come on in. Come on in. Let's have this conversation. I'm ready. I think I'm ready, Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm on my best behavior. <laughs> Um, We're going to have a good time tonight. We're going to have a good time. Listen, go tell, tell your family, come on, get on the couch with you. All. Listen, come on in and watch the broadcast on tonight. Call them up. Tell them, tune in to uh, Elevation TV Network. Tune in to Daughter's Talk. Come on in and let's have this conversation on tonight. Go ahead, prophetess. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I want to talk about the mantles on our lives. And so... Uh, that's something I talked about today and all afternoon long as I'm speaking and coaching and talking with people. Um, and there is a mantle and the mantle is a responsibility. When you have a mantle on your life, it's responsibility. It is responsibility. It's heavy. It's a weight. It's something we got to honor. And so many times we say who we are. But the mantle, <laughs> you got to be able to carry the mantle. And I told somebody something today. And sometimes God can call you. Sometimes you are called to God. Sometimes you are chosen of God. Sometimes God does have need of thee. But even with the mantle, you have to learn how to work the mantle. You have to understand how to use the mantle. You have to understand you can't bleed all over the people, y'all. <laughs> and so before you can walk in who you are, sometimes we have to allow God to do some things in us. Um, and so just because God called you to do things, it may not be today, right? Because it's a process. A lot of times when we get callings up on our lives, we think it's now. But sometimes there's some stuff we need to clean up. I'm just, you know, sometimes it is some things that we need to do, uh, Prophetess Rashida. So I, I have to, we have to use wisdom. And can you take correction? Can you be used to God? Can you handle the breaking and the stripping? Can you handle the pain and not faint? Okay, because the mantle come in a process. The mantle come with time. The mantle come with uh, 
maturity, uh, being able to work for God, being able to do things for God, there is a process. And I think a lot of times we're not mindful of the process. So I don't think we mind for the process a lot of times. I think that sometimes we see titles and we think the title enough, but you got to be able to do the work. And that's why I met with people. You know, I get a lot of calls. A lot of people tell me things and yeah, but are you in position, right? If you a prophet, to be a prophet, they are set apart. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. You have to be holy. You know what I'm saying? You got to be able to hear God. And the corruption is a part of the process. Crying is part of the process. Frustration is part of the process. I don't want to deal with this. It's a part of the process. But even if you anoint, even if you call, can you handle the mantle. Can you deal with you? Oh, ho, ho, ho. babe, you got to be able to be a big girl and God will wield that sword and cut you up. There's a lot that's required of leadership. A lot of people want to be leaders, but you don't want to take the crushing. You don't want to take the beating. You cannot preach the gospel. And live like a dog. See, I'm not one of them. I, 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 sometimes you got to clean some stuff up. I know you powerful. I know you're a prophet, but you're shocking. You got to clean it up. You got to fix it. I'm just, I, I'm just saying there's something that you got to fix. There's some stuff you got to fix. If you're going to be used of God, you have to be able to deal with you. There's no sense of us talking to the people of God and we not deal with us. I am ineffective. Oh my God, my God. I am an ineffective witness. If I preach one thing and I live another, you are ineffective when, when you preach one thing and you live something else. It makes us ineffective. And so when you're dealing with the mantle on your life, do you want the mantle? Hey, many are called, but few are chosen. Do you really want the mantle? Do you want the responsibility? Do you want the pressure? Because there's pressure. You got to be able to stand under pressure. You can't buckle under pressure. You got to be able to go through some things in your life. You can't be a leader and have a temper tantrum and walk out the church. Come on, y'all. You got to be able to hang. The mantle, the mantle. You can't be 50 and flipping out. You got to have a mantle. You got to have some self-control. You got to be able to control. Come on, because we don't have no self-control. I can't be a harlot and be a prophet. I, I know, I know. I know they don't believe that holiness is still right. Holiness is still right. Because how can you pray for other people when you can't pray for yourself? How can you deliver somebody and you ain't delivered yourself? You got to clean your own. You got to sweep at your own door. Oh. <laughs> I, I, okay, prophet. What you want me to say? Don't say it. Okay, I'm going to let you come on and talk to me. I'm going <laughs> And say, act up, cut up. Listen, come on. <laughs> But, but we do have mantles. Yes. But the mantle come with a responsibility. It's more than what it look like. When you tell me you're a woman of God, that's what I expect. You don't expect me to be cheating on Bishop Allen. I'm, an, I'm ineffective. How can I pray for you and I'm a whoremonger? I'm, 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 I'm ineffective. We could be ineffective. You could prophesy, but did God talk to you about you? Did God talk to us about our ways? God has to strip you. God has to be able to allow you to stand before other people 
and you have to stand as an example. You have to give an account. Yeah, I understand. They don't teach. There's, you got to be held accountable for the call that's upon your life. And if you are a woman of God, if you are a man of God, then act accordingly. Judgment has to begin within, within, in the house of God with me. I critique me. Right. If it's things in me that's not like God, I say, get it together, girl. You can't be doing all that foolery. You can't be you can't work in ministry and be a mess. None has apprehended. We're not saying that none of us is perfect, but you show me you. You need to be striving for perfection. You can't be drunk all night and then you preach a Sunday morning. <laughs> you can't handle the mantle. Right. You can't handle them. I can't be an adulterer and work with women. I'm an ineffective witness. Ineffective. It's not that God is not able, but it's the simple fact of the matter that you have to represent God. And I was taught, if you can't represent God, sit down, be quiet. Don't do it. If I was going to mess up, let me tell you something. I ain't going to do it openly. If I'm a hot mess, I'm just going to sit down and get it together. You got to sit down and let God clean us up. He got to take things out of us. He got to work on us. He has to change us. No, I'm not a hundred, but we, we should strive for perfection. Yes, grace is dirty and we should fall. But you should need grace every day, all day, 50. I'm just saying, you got to, we got to mature. You see, why you got me talking about the mantle? I'm just saying, the mantle is heavy. The mantle, it costs you something. The mantle, you have to sacrifice for it. The mantle, you got to give up some stuff for God. The mantle, I got to kill some things in me to please God. I have to kill some stuff in me to please God. We was in Bible class Wednesday night. We talked about the, the flesh. And I told Bishop Adam, we, we dealt with the issue of lust. And I say, unlike, you know, when I see stuff, I just close my eyes and turn my head. That's how I deal with that. Sometimes you need to close your eyes and turn your head. Sometimes you don't need to. See, we allow our flesh to do too much. The Bible said that it's better to be maimed and make it in the house <laughs> than not to make it in the house. He said, if your eye offend thee, to pluck it out. So we got to pluck some stuff out of us. You got some things you're struggling with. Know, know what you're dealing with and don't play with it. I don't play with stuff, right? I don't think I'm all that. I, I ain't that same. I'm saved by grace. I got a lot of time in God, but I don't play with the fire, right? I don't flirt with men. I don't do that. I don't entertain some stuff. I don't club no more. Come on. Come on, I don't, you ain't going to see me on the in the bar. It ain't going on. I ain't going to be in the bar and preach Sunday morning. The devil, it, no, y'all ain't going to say. I saw first, you ain't see first lady and you ain't seen my butt in some pants going down the street. The devil is a liar. Because mm -mm -mm. mm -mm -mm. they make me ineffective. The mantle. God is calling us to a higher calling. And if you're going to work the mantle on your life, then we're going to have to die to ourselves. And a lot of people, they want me to work with me and I tell them, yeah, I don't know. Because if I work with you, I'm going to offend you. You know, so because it's something, <laughs> I'm going to be nice, but it's something, <laughs> No, you ain't going to say you work with me and you got 20 kids and you nah, and you doing all that. I was a teenage mother. I ain't talking about women that ain't married. I was a mother at 15. But at 15, I never per could profess that I was a prophet of God. You can't be ratchet and messy and still talking about you belong to God. Well, no God in that. I was a fit mother at 15 because I was disobedient. 
Well, no, God, that was not God's fault. Was there a mantle up on my life? Yes. But I had to decide if I would live for God or be a mess. Eventually, I had to choose God. Those first few years when I had the Holy Ghost, I was I was struggling in my flesh. I wanted to be like everybody else. I wanted to do what everybody else did. But eventually, by the time I hit from 19 to 49, I've been in this thing. Have I apprehended? No. But I'm striving. If I fall short, I repent. God, help me. God, change me. God, wash me. God, help me not to be a stumbling block. Don't let me be a mess and I cause other people to stray away from the faith. God, help me not to be a stumbling block. Don't be a hindrance. It's a lot of people that have no desire to serve God, but they don't want you to serve God. That's a fact. God, I don't want to be that person. The mantle that's upon my life, the relationship that we have with God, God is worth every, He's worth the sacrifice. It's hard. Serving God is hard. Preaching the gospel is hard. Living the gospel <laughs> is hard. Because in the process, I got I gotta deal with my staying attitude. Because Nastiness is not anointing. Arrogance is not holiness. High-mindedness is not of God because he humbled himself to the cross. My, my. So can God use me? Can God trust me? Can I be effective in the ministry? Can I be a light to the women? Or am I causing them to err? Am I making excuses for being... No, if we are out of position, it is not because God is not able. If I am out of position, it's because I have not yielded. Anytime God. in my life, if I messed up, woman of God, it was not because God did not keep me. Uh, it was come me. on. It's us. I can't be saved. You can't be saved because you don't want to kill your flesh. You don't want to be saved because you don't want to do what God tell me to do. I, girl, I played that. I, I see these 30 years, I played so many games with God. Oh, God, I never would have did that if they wouldn't have done this. God was like, that was that's cute. God was like, you're not held accountable for other people's actions, but you are held accountable for your action. If you have a mantle and if you're a leader, then you lead. If you cannot lead, then sit down. So I'm a big girl. Age, I don't care what nobody say. If you can't live it, go on and just be quiet. Oh, woman of God, I want to work with you. No, you don't want to work with me. You don't want to work with me. You don't want to work with me. It may be a little painful. You don't work I, I mean, if, if you don't want to, hey, I may not be the person for you. If you want to live like a dog, I don't think I'm the right person for you. Because I don't give myself, I'm hard on me. Because when you call, when you stand and you say you a prophet, be the prophet. The prophets, not these, not the fortune tellers, not this bye, 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 prophesying for three hours. That ain't what prophets did. They walked in authority. They yeah. interceded. They went before God. They worked between God and the people. They stood in the gap. They prayed. They interceded. They brought the people back to the purpose of what they were doing. When people saw true prophets, they didn't want to see them coming. If everybody want to see you when you come, you are not effective because they don't want to see the true prophets because the prophets come to set things in order. And we don't come want on. Come on. We want people to say, oh, you're going to get that house. I prophesy things. Glory. But sometimes God don't always have good things to say. It's things that God ain't said good to me. <laughs> it's been times I was in situations. I remember God telling me, keep playing with me. God said, you know, I could kill you. You do. You know that I would kill you. Don't you know to stop playing with me? 
God said, I'm not to be played with. God, like, I don't know who you think you're playing with. He said, but I see what you're doing. Mm. And you better stop it before I bring judgment. Mm. Judgment is a part of order. God judges the house. The, the prophets come to bring judgment. Ooh. We have got out of position. We are yes. both pleased, folks. You want to look cute. You don't want to deal with some stuff. I'm going to deal with it. If you don't want me to deal with it, don't bring it to my door. But if you come down this street, baby, I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> if you don't, yes. want to hear, don't say nothing to them. Ooh, say nothing to me, and I won't say nothing to you. But if you call my phone, if you get on this show and you ask me what God say, I'm going to say it. God made me clean up. Woman of God, God made me get married. He said, you're going to serve me. You, you can't live. You can't. What you, come on. Come on. Come on. And say you mine. God was like, who does that? Yes. What? Come on. Come on. He said, you ineffective. We messed up and we bleeding over the people. I'm hurting. You hurt, get deliverance. Mm. Then come to the altar. Come to the altar. Don't bleed over the church. Mm. Don't bring all your issues, leaders. You jacked up, sit down, get it together, then come back. Mm. Mm. We all got, well, I do got issues. But you got to be able to Walk and chew gum at the same time. You can't be so caught up in what you're going through that you can't work the mantle on your life. You wow. can't be so blinded by trials and tribulations that you lose the sight of your purpose. Mm -hmm. We have our own agendas. Pro these prophets, they got their own agenda. Yeah. Cash out me. $39.99, I got a word. I am not a psychic. Yes. Don't be scared. Send me no money talking about what God said, nothing. Repent. Be saved for real. Oh. <laughs> I don't like it. What? Yes, yes. Tell me what call am I? I don't care if your car blue, green, or gray. You need to get some stuff together. Oh, Jesus. You don't got, that's why I make my own money. That way you ain't got to cash app it to me and we ain't got to worry about it. Then I can say what God say and I ain't got to worry about it if you mad or not. <laughs> that's why God let us make our own money. Come we on here. Come on. Yes. Then Come I can on. speak the truth and I Woo. can be free. Ah. And I don't Woo. need you to take care of me. Ah. Hey. Yes. My God. Yes. We not for sale. Come on here. Come 29, on here. 99, 99, 97, 99. You got a word. I ain't got no word. Jesus say My God. To Woo. the utmost. Get your house in order. Get your heart Woo. right. Get your yes. mind right. Yes. Be worthy of the call that's up on your life. If you have a mantle, then carry the mantle. If he has anointed you, then thank God that he has chosen you. I, I ran for my call along. I ran. I was one of them people. I was a prophet young. <laughs> I am for I did not publicly acknowledge. Uh-uh, go go. I did not publicly acknowledge I was a prophet till I was 45. I did not publicly tell anybody I was a prophet till I was 45. Wow. wow. Why? Because I knew. <laughs> when you tell people that they look at then I got to be held accountable for that. I know God called me, but I'm running. Why are we run? You run it because you know. <laughs> you know God is going to make us give us some stuff. We yes. know. You know. That is a sacrifice. Stop. Mm -hmm. I'm free. I just let, no, you ain't free. You were bought with a price. You are not your own. Oh, they don't say that no more. You were you were bought with the price. <laughs> Come you on, yeah. not your own. See, prophetess, maybe you shouldn't get the big girls. Maybe, maybe you have to call some people that <laughs> but I have to walk this. Because when I came in ministry, when I was a young woman, baby, them mothers tore us up. 
We need that again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need a standard in church. They used to say mean stuff to me. I mean, when I was a young woman in my twenties, she's like, "Baby, put a girdle on." Come on, baby, it's too Come much on. moving. Come on, cause I want one hundred and ten pounds. They used to hurt my feelings. <laughs> but listen, had now that you can't hardly say this like walking on eggshells. You can't say nothing to nobody. Just, I'm offended, and I'm. A and all and it's like what the heck is what is going on here like they, cause they ain't serving god they sell and they they serve their belly mm. i can't rebuke girl it's some days when i go to church and by the time i leave sunday morning i look on the floor i told bishop allen when he got done preaching one day i said it got to be blood all over this flow jesus because god they cut me I'm, I'm, I know I'm just hemorrhaging so because God had just sh 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 he didn't cut me up cut my little fit and I thought I was doing good he didn't brought the word and just sh 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 work on it he was like girl sh 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 you still missing in this area sh 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 clean that stuff up sh 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 he said I know you thought you were doing good he said you thought you think of yourself more highly than you are whoosh <laughs> God oh, said, you ain't doing that good. <laughs> he said, know that it's grace. Because you ain't Jesus. doing that good. My God. Lord, forgive us. Ooh, Our geez. best is like filthy rags. The, if we are living all we can for God, we still have not apprehended. No matter how hard we press it, we still say by grace. And so that means we got to work on some stuff. It's some things in us that we got to work on. Your attitude jacked up, work on it. You're nasty, work on it. You are hauling. Don't play with the fire. See, I had a baby young. I don't play with anything sexual. I don't flirt. I don't look. I don't touch. I don't think. Because, <laughs> see, God beat me so. God beat me so. See, some things in your life when you falling, when God get through beating you, you don't got to go through that. I say, I'm good. I'm good, God. <laughs> oh, I got that beating. I'm good. I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to turn my head, Jesus. Ah! Because there is a cost. That was when I was young. I fell in my early 20s. And for a season, I repented. I talked to my bishop about it. But for a season, God did not talk to me. I went to church. I didn't hear him. I prayed. I cried. I fasted. And it was like over a year. God was silent to me. He answered me. Oh, I'm sorry. They don't teach that no more. Ooh, I'm sorry. He wouldn't talk to me. I would beg. I would plead. He wouldn't have nothing to do with me. A year passed. And when he started talking, I said, you know what, God? Never. Because <laughs> it ain't never like when God that man, he don't even talk to you. You got to call him. And he won't answer. I know y'all act like he, no, baby, you can mess up and God will be like, oh, okay. And I repented. Went and talked to my bishop about it, fixed it. God still was like, there's some, there's an anointing upon your life. And if you're not careful when you messing with stuff, when you're out of position and when you're out of order, You'll lose the anointing. You could be up here, but God can take you down here. And sometimes you never recover where you was at. Don't play with it. You can lose the anointing upon your life. He will, he will throw you out and get somebody else. Jesus. He said, You ain't even effective for the kingdom. Jesus. He rejects us. I was rejected. You know how long ago that was? When I think about it today, I could cry. 
because it brought tears in my eyes. For him not to answer me. And I was pleading. I did all that. God was told, he said, you think I'm playing with you? He said, but this is the last time. He said, you think I'm playing with you, Deborah? He said, okay. All right. He said, you know what? <laughs> God was like, okay. God was like, but you know what? I'm going to show you something. I fasted. He didn't answer. I cried. He still didn't answer. I pleaded. Oh, you ain't never had God mad at you. Child. <laughs> so I ain't doing that no more. I'm good. I want to be saved. I'm not here under duress. I didn't understand when I was younger and God used me. I didn't understand when I was a young woman that to be used of God was such an honor. I didn't value then. I didn't start valuing who I was at about 19. Because when you're young, sometimes you don't comprehend. Oh. But what I'm going to do without God? I, I, I ain't going to make it. I'm going to be out of my mind. I ain't going to make it. <laughs> I'm just stuck right there. I'm, I'm not going to make it. See, some of us think without God, we're going to be all right. No, I'm not going to make it. Let's just put that out. But if God leave them, <laughs> baby, it's over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm done. I can't deal with this house. I can't deal with this marriage. I can't deal with these kids. I can't deal with myself. I can't deal with my life. I can't deal with nothing without him. He's my comfort. I love God. It ain't changed. It has not changed. I still love him. And I want to be pleased. It don't matter if you don't be pleased by me. Because you can't please folks and God. You got to pick. You can't be made. We men please us. Yeah. You got to like. You ain't got to like that. You ain't got to buy my books. You ain't got to do none of that. Long as God like me. Come on, long as he's pleased. Yes. Ah, Jesus. Because if I live and with the end and he say, depart from me, you work of iniquity. Do you know how hard broken people are going to be when we say I have preached in your lane? I have, there are preachers that have groupies. Who does that? Who meet the men of God after they come up the stage and sleep with them? Who, you, are you not scared? Are you not afraid? Are you not scared that God may throw lightning from the sky? I'm just saying, you ain't weary. <laughs> you ain't afraid that the whole house may catch on fire. I'm just saying, fear God. He a terrible God. We didn't lost the fear of God. Yeah. We didn't let people think yes. that he a loving God. No, he's a God of judgment. He will beat the sleeves up off you. He didn't beat Deborah. Oh, I learned something as I got older. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah. When I was younger, I didn't understand that. I had questions. Why God? Why God? Now I don't do all that. I say, yay, Lord. I'm good, Jesus. <laughs> I, I don't know what we want now. But if you're going to carry the mantle, and if you're going to have power, because we need the anointing. I don't need to be your fan. Yeah. I need you to have the anointing on your life yeah. to be able to lay hands on the sick and they recover. I need you to be able to speak a word into the lives of the people so that they can be healed, set free, and delivered. But I cannot do that if I'm bound. My God. How can Satan cast out Satan? My God. You a devil trying to cast out a devil. Ain't nothing changed. Mm. 
Ain't nothing going nowhere. We got to change. Yes. Yeah. And so let's carry the mantle. Wow. Walk worthy yes. of the call. Yes. It's in my heart. And I'm, I'm walk worthy. Mm. Come on, y'all. We serve the King of glory. The Lord of hosts. Hey, my God. The great I am. Yes, come and on. he has taken residence in us. Mm. And we are not worthy. And yet, he has chosen us. What should we render unto God for all of his benefits? Your life. Yes. You say she come out. Oh, yeah, I come from that old church. Yeah. I got the <laughs> old and the new. Yeah, I can rock them both. Yes. Because we got to bridge it. Yeah. Because we can't put away all the old things. Because then we lose sight. Mm. I used to think that the mothers was mean. But they weren't because we don't understand moderation. They say, don't do this. Don't do that. Because God let you do stuff, but you go crazy with it. You can't. You can't. If God give you a little grace, we just lose our mind. I do. You know? <laughs> I just don't always do right sometimes. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> God told me one day, he was like, you know what? It's just ridiculous, Deborah. He's like, if I don't keep my hand on you, he's like, you just don't do right. Right? So he has to keep a certain on us. Because we hard-headed. Stiff-necked. Ooh. Ooh. That was a test I flunked for years. <laughs> I, and I kept flunking this same test. I'm just like, oh my God. And then I passed the test. And I was like, oh, my God. It wasn't even that hard. God was like, you just slow. God was like, it is, you just don't listen. What? God was like, you just. <sighs> Holy God. Us. But have you ever struggled with something? And when you finally passed the test, it wasn't that hard. If I would have just listened to God. It wouldn't even took all that. God was like, really? God was like, man, you just, you definitely cheat. Whoa. I was like, man. Oh, goodness. And God look at us some days and be like, look, this is what I'm dealing with. He has a sense of humor for he real. Does. He has to. <laughs> I can be slow, Jesus. And I told God that I say, Lord, I know I'm sorry, Jesus. I'm just slow, God. Lord, forgive me. Lord, help me, Jesus. Lord, have mercy on me. Because it wasn't that hard. But I just wanted to do it my way. Yeah, come on now. Come on now. In my way, I had to walk that thing for a long time. And when I passed, I was like, that was just a dumb moment. That's what you just do. You dance. Mm, that mindset. Just mm. got to make it hard. God, like, if you just did what I told you to do, we wouldn't even have to go through this. You've been in this wilderness all this time. Come on, children. Of Israel. Come on. Come on. You don't listen <laughs> yeah, <we did>. to <laughs> Come on. We are in the wilderness because we don't listen. Mm. And study following what God tell us. We follow what folks say. You can't please people and God. Either you're going to love this world or you're going to love God. And that's, that's, at the, that's the mantle. It comes with a price. It's heavy. It's weighty. It's on your back. And God require more of thee. Woo! <laughs> too much. Let me give it to y'all that like it. Too much is given. Much is required. So why they say, oh, this pastor Deborah, this prophet Deborah, oh, 
know that God is requiring that life. The same tie that we want is the same life we got to live. Mm, mm, mm. And the prophets were effective. They changed the world. They did mighty great exploits for God. Mm. They battle for God. Mm. They suffer for God. Mm, mm, mm. They were persecuted for God. Boy, them people didn't want to see them people come. And you heard me. <laughs> the prophets of old caught it. The mantle ain't changed, y'all. We just busy trying to please folks. Yeah. 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 I'm done, woman of God. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> you know, I feel like I'd be so bad. I'd be on my best behavior. <laughs> But you're good. You're good. You know, uh, well, when you came in, one of the things that I'm learning is that, and that helps me, let's, let's just be transparent. Let's just be honest. One of the things that helps me with maintain, how about that? Maintain my deliverance <laughs> is we have to know ourselves, be honest with ourselves. And you talked, you hit on, oh my gosh, you hit, you were hitting on this. And like you said, there are certain things that you just don't do or find yourself in certain place because the thing is, you know yourself or you know what God has delivered you from, you know where he's brought you from. And so I appreciate you saying that. And it's so true. And when we do that, like the scripture says that, hey, if, if this is where you found yourself, and this is what you do, hey, he was talking about cutting off stuff, but they said, whatever it takes to maintain your deliverance, I'm going to need you to go ahead and do that, you know, to Hold keep your ass. And, you know, yes. And sometimes, and I can say this from experience, we're not willing to take, come on, Lord, have mercy, Jesus, yes. to maintain our deliverance. We're not willing. <laughs> to do whatever it takes to maintain it. And then we find ourselves back in the same position. Then we come up with old oh, excuses and pity part and all these things. But I, I just thank God because I know that at one point when he, after he restored me, it was just like, look, now the, the decision is yours. What are you going to do? And so I just appreciate you for just even hitting a little bit on that. But even with the mental you talked about this process. You talked about it being weighty. You talked about you hit. You talked about a, a few things, and you didn't go into it too much. But it is. It does. And we were just talking about on Wednesday. Are we willing to pay the cost? Oh God. Are we willing to pay the cost? We want the oil, or we want. I want to watch what I say. But are we willing to pay? The cost, are we meaning, are we willing to die to ourselves? When I say pay the cost, are we willing to die to ourselves to take up our cross? Are we willing? And I remember one day the Lord had, it was, I received a word and this blessed me. I, you know, it wasn't about receiving houses, the materialistic stuff, Pastor Deborah, Prophetess Deborah. It wasn't about that for me. M what means uh, the most to me is my character, you know, how God sees me. That's what means everything to me. And people have to understand what he has brought me from. You know, when you've been, listen here, listen, come on here. I, I tell people, I was that Luke 7 woman. Listen, I've been forgiven for much. I've done a whole lot. You hear what I'm saying? Thank and God. I've been forgiven for much. And when God said to me, now I can trust you that you won't taint my people. That wasn't an embarrassing moment. That meant everything to me. That was a humbling moment. What and I'm just like, oh my God. 
Come on. on. That means hey. everything. Come hey. on. Hey. When God can say yes, that about you, God. now I can trust you. Yes, God. And you were talking about the mantles, and hey. we want to walk in these mantles, these callings, but we don't want to allow God to process us. We don't want Him to deliver us to, you know, deliver us from our old behavior, our old nature. Ooh, but listen, good. I'm telling you, it's nothing greater, nothing better when God Himself say that He. He can trust you when God himself is speaking up on your behalf about your character. Listen, that means everything. Yes, God. That means everything. I don't have to worry about all the materialistic stuff because I know that's coming. Why? Because my character, my heart is right. My heart is in the right posture before the Father. And he said, all that stuff will be added, given unto me. So I don't have to chase after it. It's coming, right? Because why yes. my focus is right. Yes, God. I'm willing to die for the gospel. Yes. If he asked me to lay down my life. Yes, God. Lord, I'm willing. Hey. <laughs> oh, don't get this thing. Oh, I'm willing. If they had to kill the saints. I'm willing, God. He Woo. didn't that much to me. Mm. I ain't love nobody. I love God. I don't look, see, you know, we want these fairy tales. I ain't loved, I, I had six children and I'm a mother, but I don't love them kids, I love Jesus. Nobody. I have an amazing man of God that I'm married to, Bishop Allen. Nobody. <laughs> ain't nobody like him. Not in all the earth. When we put him back first yes. and on the throne Jesus. and honor him and serve him and reverence him. God is a God of judge. God is a God of love. My brother used to always laugh at me. I said, yeah, but God will kill you. <laughs> hey. In the Old Testament, he opened up floors and killed 20,000 at one time. God, God slayed a whole lot of folks in the old and in the new. When God brought judgment, heads rolled. Jesus. Even the prophets. Mm. It was prophets that was out of position. Wouldn't judge their own house. Mm. And he fell and broke his own neck. Mm. God ain't gonna make, I'm not gonna break my neck for these kids. Uh uh, God. Mm -mm. Mm. I'm gonna tell them what God said because God ain't gonna kill me over them. No, mm. no, ma'am. Because mm. I gotta say, we gotta be saved. Mm. Work out our own soul salvation. There it is. Save yourself from this untoward generation. Mm. Bishop Allen get mad at me because I do ebonics. I say, if all else fails, save yourself. That ain't what the scripture says. The scripture say to work at your own soul salvation. But my ebonics say, save yourself, Deborah. Hey, because we got to stand for ourselves. Ain't no sense of all of us dying and going to hell. Some of us got to make it, Jesus. Lord, let me make it, Jesus. I, hey, hey, hey. Lord, I got to make it. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm telling you, I got to make it. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I pray that we all make it, but Jesus. Uh, <laughs> you are young. <laughs> yes, I got to stand for myself, baby. I pray these kids be saved, Jesus. But if they don't, uh, mama going to make it. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that's crazy when we say that. Mm -hmm. But you can preach to others and become a castaway. You can preach yes. to others. Yes. And you miss God. Yes. The devil is a liar. Yes. Come I'm going to make it. Too many years. I done gave God too many years. I told Deborah that. I said, Deborah, girl, get yourself together. We've been in this too long. Girl, we ain't got time for God to kill us now. God, I'm going to be left now. All the tears. All the fasting and praying changing my life. And God going to leave me? No, ma'am. I'm chasing God. <laughs> we got to chase him. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. 
<laughs> well, thank you so so much, Prophetess Deborah, Prophetess Pastor Deborah. Thank you so much. I don't know what happened to our little names. I don't know what I did over here, but anyway. <laughs> Listen, yes, amen. So if the Lord is leading you to sow into the woman of God, her website is scrolling on the bottom. She's not asking for anything, but you please, by all means, we don't want, we also don't want um, to interfere with whatever God is telling you as well. So her information is scrolling on the bottom and you can just go there and um, give unto her as the Lord is leading you. And um, prophetess, if you could just let the people know uh, how to connect with you or anything that you have going on, uh, you just let them know about what you're doing because you are doing the work of the Lord. And it is beautiful in his sight. Hallelujah. <laughs> I think in this season that the women of God have to stand up and be counted for. I believe that God is allowing us to do so many things because he wants his name to be represented in the earth. So I believe that he is calling the mature women, the women that has been in this thing, that he's making us stand up. And be counted for. Uh, you can follow me easy on Facebook. I'm Senior Pastor Deborah Allen, and then on Instagram and uh, Twitter, Prophet is Deborah Allen. Uh, I write under Prophet is Deborah Allen. I am a author. Uh, I am a coach, so I am a coach. I'm doing a lot of different things in coaching. I'm doing the mantle upon your life. I have the new fierce uh, ignition and activation program. I have the new executive fierce voices of destiny, um, purpose in your hands and many different things. But we have to be ready when Jesus come. You don't know the day or the hour. That God is going to require that we give an answer for how we have lived our lives. And so the church can know I am a motivational speaker. If you're looking for a speaker, I speak. I am a motivational speaker because God wants us to come out the church. And God wants us to be seen by the masses. God wants us seen by the masses. Because... We are changing lives. We are changing lives. You are a world changer. You are the God influence in the earth. And so arise up and lift up a standard for God. Lift up a standard, saints. You women of God look like it. Act like it, talk like it, walk like it, be, be out, be about our father's business. I really uh, didn't know that God would do all the things that he's doing. But I know this, that I'm able to perform what he wants us to perform. You are enough. You can do what God needs you to do. But we got to be who we say we are. That's all I'm saying. You have to be who you say you are. Who you see on the TV. I'm that person when you call me. I'm that person when you come to church. I don't change who I am. To be a motivational speaker, I'm still Pastor Deborah. When I'm an author and I walk in that ram, when I be on the boss network and I walk, rock with the bosses, I'm still Pastor Deborah. I don't change who I am for a platform. They gonna get this Deborah, the same version. I don't drop standards to have stuff. But if they want me, then they got to accept me for who I am. Or they don't want me. Be who you are, y'all. Come on, saints. Represent our God. Let us make him look great in the earth. I don't care if I look good. Make our God name great. Let Jesus arise. I'm sorry, because I'm going to push this Jesus. I don't care where you at. I don't care what you've done. God have needed thee. And you still got time to get it right. You are not too late. 
You ain't done too much. God still wants you. Come on to the party. That's what I'm, I'm, that's what I'm doing in this season. I'm compelling the people to come back. I'm not here under duress. I'm where I want to be. Nobody make me serve God. I want to be saved. He ain't got me in no headlock. I came willfully. <laughs> I'm a willing prisoner over here. And we have to let people see the joy that it is to serve God. And when they see we still love them, they'll come back to them. And so that's how we going to win. Thank y'all for having me. Thank you for uh, allowing me to be featured for your month of June. I thought it was an honor. When See, when people want me to do anything, it is an honor. And I really appreciate uh, the love that you have shown me for the month of June. It's July. Being here today. Because somebody is going to hear this. You may be a teenage mother. I was one of them. Come on. He got need of thee. I'm all messed up. That's right. Come on. We all was messed up. Come on. Don't nobody want me. God always want us. Don't nobody love me. I'm looking for love. God will love you. Come on. <laughs> See, that's my default mechanism. Because that's where God got me. Come on back. I'm on a mission. I'm trying to reach somebody. Mm -hmm. If I reach one, I've done my job. I ain't got to reach 50 million. Come on. We reach one. <laughs> and we reach it more than one. If we reach them and let them know that the mantle on your life is worth the sacrifice to be able to say what well, thus said the Lord and have power and authority is worth all those other things. Value your relationship. That's all, y'all. Thank you, woman of God, for having me. Blessings unto you. I'm grateful. I'm glad to be here, and it is such an honor. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much for being here with us on tonight here on Daughters Talk. Thank you all for um, watching. Thank you so much. Uh, come back, join us next Friday. We will be here at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have our special guest, Apostle Vanessa Bowler, will be with us um, on next. <laughs> Amen. I'm to come um, over and see. Hey, glory. Amen. Thank you so much on next Friday. And if you don't mind, if you could just do a, a quick corporate prayer uh, for tonight, um, it would be greatly appreciated. But you all follow uh, Pastor Prophetess Deborah Allen, and we had her social media platforms up as well as her website is scrolling as well. So connect if the Lord is leading you to connect. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the mantles upon our lives. And Lord, even for the ones that feel like they don't have a mantle, yes. but to serve you is a mantle as well. Lord, we pray that we live for you. We pray that we be pleasing to your sight. Lord, yes. remember the ones that don't have a mind. Lord, we pray that you give them a mind. Lord, we see divine healing from the north, south, east, and west. Even for the families that's dealing with COVID, even the ones in the hospital, Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus. Lord, we speak healing. And remember this woman of God, even as she labor for you and platform out your people, give her mercy and grace and favor upon her life. Lord, remember everyone under the sound of our voice. Lord, remember them keep them, protect them, provide for them, save Lord to the utmost. In Jesus name we pray. Amen.
Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you so much, woman of God. Well, it has truly been an honor, a treat on tonight. We thank God for the conversation of mantles on tonight. We thank you all for tuning in on tonight to this broadcast. Thank you so much. We love and appreciate you all. Have a great weekend and a happy 4th of July. Enjoy your time with your families. Enjoy your time. Just enjoy your time. Take time for yourself. Invest in yourself. Amen. Well, we love you all and thank you so much. Blessings to you, woman of God. Thank you. And y'all have a great night. Thank you, Jesus.